All right, let's get our Bibles out, y'all, and get over to Deuteronomy chapter 8. My wife was saying earlier, we've been, the last three weeks, we've been talking about uh, prosperity, amen, and I'm going to continue on that today, amen. amen. How many of y'all want to be prosperous in here? Amen. 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 You want to be prosperous, amen. So that's what we're going to learn that today, how to be prosperous, amen, and uh, it's God's will for you to be prosperous, you know. Uh, I don't know who told you it ain't, but I'm telling you it is. For the last two weeks, we've been going through the Word of God and showing that it's, it's, it's God's will for you to prosper. And I know uh, usually when we talk about prosperity, we usually talk about the whole life part. But today, I'm just going to talk about your money. Amen. 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 It's okay to talk about money. Amen. Right. And uh, I ain't going to sit up here like I told you last week. We ain't going to give me because I ain't going to have no $100, $20 lines for you to give in and none of that other stuff. I'm just going to give you the Word, and then you take it, and then... You know, when I look at y'all six months from now, y'all going to be looking totally different than what y'all are right now. Amen. amen. I'm talking about, you know, prosperous. That's a good word. Amen. amen. And then the church has become almost a cuss word because when you say prosperous, you know, oh, they come to prosperity guys, they want to, you know, start talking all this stuff. No, that ain't what we're doing here at the Faith Church. We believe that hearing, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so when we start talking about your finances, me and my wife's desire is that you get the finances you need to be able to meet every need, plus do a good work in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. That's God's will for you. And so that's what we're going to learn today. So y'all got Deuteronomy 8 and 18? All right, well, let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Father, forgive us from everything that we may have done, God. Father, we just thank you and give you all the praise, honor, and glory, God, that as we uh, coming to this place, to have come into this place today to hear your word. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit who's here with us. I thank you that he's going to lead and guide me today, God. Father, I thank you that he's going to tell me what to say. I give him free will to do whatever it is he needs to do through me. Father, I just want to please you today. And so, Father, I just thank you that there's these people that are sitting here, these great people that you've assembled here today, come to hear your word. God, I thank you that they're going to hear this word with the ears that you would have them to hear with that they can receive this word by the spirit and not by the flesh. So we come against every bit of offense today. And so, Father, we thank you that this word will be received by them and they will take it and do it and become prosperous as a result of it. I decree right now, God, that everyone here is ahead and not the tail. They're above only and not beneath. They come behind and no good thing. Everything that they touch prospers. Everywhere they go is blessed. And everything they do will prosper. I thank you, God, that you planted them by the rivers of living water, that their fruit is coming now in their season, Lord. And we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it now. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. All right, look at verse 18. It says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that give thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Amen. And so we read here that God, the Bible says that God has given us the power to get wealth. Say power to get wealth. Power to get wealth. And so that word power means that God has given each and every one of you here the ability to get wealth. And so when I went up there and I, you know, because I want to make sure that I'm doing things right. I went and looked up the Hebrew word of that uh, translation, that word wealth. And it's spelled C-H-A-Y-I-L, Cahill, which, Cahill, which means substance, goods, and riches. Amen? So it says that God has given me the ability to go and get substance. Say substance. substance. Say goods. Good. And riches. Say riches. riches. Amen. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make me what? And add to what? So it's okay to be rich. God says he could, that the blessing of the Lord is going to make me what? Rich. And I'm not going to be unhappy. Amen. I was talking to somebody in the car last night. I said, you know what? People, most people, we, we said uh, two weeks ago that most people are afraid to be prosperous because they're too busy thinking what other folks are going to say about them. They're going to talk about you when you're broke. Why not let them talk about you when you're overflowing in abundance? Hey, amen. Hey, you know, people will talk about you whether you got a whole lot or whether you don't, so it don't matter. They're going to talk about you anyway. Right. And so my thing is, I'd rather them talk about me living out 
the promise that God made my forefather Abraham. Amen? He told Abraham, he said, look, I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to about, you know, give you to make the, the stars of the, the sky. That's how many of your seed go be. But he says, I'm also going to bless those, your seed, in their generation. Amen? And so that I am a born-again believer, I am now under the covenant of the promise that God made Abraham. And so whatever prosperity is in my generation, God promised to bless me that way. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, back a long time ago, they had herds and flocks and all those things. Amen? But now we did now the, the earth deals with money. Right. Amen? Amen? And so that's how we, that's how the earth deals with things. Now I understand what Romans 12 and 2 says, don't be conformed to the ways of this world. Amen? But try to go do something with no money in your pocket. <laughs> Amen? You can't do nothing without it. Now I know the Bible says that the love of money, say the love of money, love of money. is a root of all evil. That means that I'm not, I'm not in love with money, but money's a tool for me. Amen? Amen? And so I have to understand that God wants me rich so that he can help, so he can use what I have to help him bring his plan into the earth. Amen? Amen. But it ain't just for you. It ain't just for the, for the earth. It's also for you. Say it's for me. Psalms 35, 27 says that God enjoys or takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God takes pleasure in you being prosperous. Amen. Amen. John 10 and 10 said the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you may have life and that more what? Abundantly. The Amplified says that he, he wants you to have this life, this abundant life that overflows. So the life of God is all about abundance. Tell your neighbor that said the life of God is all about abundance. So if God gave me the ability, then I can surely say that it is his will that I am, I'm supposed to be wealthy. And today we're going to be talking about financial stability. Because that's the problem with a lot of us. We're not stable financially. It's up one minute, down the next minute. But I want us to leave out of here with a plan going into tomorrow. Amen. Not January the 1st. I say, say, no, matter of fact, say today. Yeah. That we leave out of here with a plan that I am financially stable. Amen. 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 Now, financially stable don't come with a whole lot of money. Right. Financial stability comes by changing how you deal with it. Because you can have millions and still be broke. Amen. You can blow it all. But if you learn how to be, be prosperous God's way, then you will always have it. Amen. And so the Bible has a, a, a quick formula about how to be prosperous and how to keep it. And it's very simple. Look over at 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. You know, we talk about God's way of being prosperous. Because, see, the principle that God provides for us to be prosperous will allow us to be wealthy and successful in every, in every endeavor. Amen? And that you never fail. Look at verse... Uh, 20. It says, and they rose early in the morning. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Y'all got it? Say, yeah, when you got it, say, I got it. Okay, all right. I still hear some turning. All right. And when they, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you do what? Prosper. Prosper. So the first thing I got to do is have faith in God. Say, I got to have faith in God. So if you want to prosper, you first got to have faith in God's way of prospering. Amen? Amen. Look at the Amplified. Well, I'm going to read the Amplified version of this. It says, and they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out to Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe and remain steadfast to his prophets, and you shall prosper. So we believe in the Lord, but we also got to make sure that we remain steadfast to the people who are speaking to us about the things of God. So not obey to come in to church and your word, your pastor is giving you the word of God and to turn around and not obey it is not going is going to do something to your prosperity. Because right. I said, believe the word of the man or woman.
God's what comes out of their mouth and you're going to prosper. So y'all understand this is why we give you the word of God here, because the word of God is what's going to cause you to prosper. Amen. Amen. Psalms 1 tells me that it says that when I meditate on the word day and night. Amen. So then I shall. Pro it, says, it says that uh, I'm going to I'm going to prosper in everything that I do when I just meditate on God's word. Amen. But it's about meditate. I mean, about the word of God. The word of God is going to bring the prosperity to you. I got to have faith in his word. Amen. If you ain't going to trust in God's system, who are you going to trust? Amen. Look at Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one. Verse number seven. Got to do things God's way. It says there. Here's God talking to Joshua. I want to be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according all to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wherever you go. Amen? So I got to have faith in God, then I got to obey his word. Say that with me. Say, I got to have faith in God, and I got to obey his word. Now, ain't that real simple? You want to be prosperous God's way? Have faith in God and obey his word. It ain't real hard. We can just stop right there. But I ain't. But I mean, you know, we can, <laughs> we can, I mean, it's, it's, you, oh, he says, have faith in God, trust and believe in me and do my word and you will prosper. You will have good success. Say good success. good success. So these two things, faith and obedience, attract the spirit and blessings of God. See, when I'm obeying his word and I believe in God, it's going to attract the blessings, they're, they're going to come to me. And the more I apply them, the more prosperous I become. Look at the life of Abram. The more he obeyed God, the richer he got. Okay. We know that, that uh, he left the wrong way. God ain't talked to him for a long time. But then, you know, along the way, he ended up, you know, amassing a great amount of wealth. Him and Lot both had a bunch of cattle and livestock. Then once he broke away from Lot, God showed him the next level of prosperity. Then when he gave the tithes under Melchizedek, God made that covenant with him. And then he started talking about how he was going to bless it. So the more you obey God, the more you have faith in God, the more prosperous you become. Amen. Look over here. At Psalms chapter 112. Psalms chapter 112. Got some prosperous people in here today. Amen. 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 Look at Psalms 112. Verse number one. Praise ye the Lord. Blesses the man that feared the Lord, that, great, that delight greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Poverty shall be in his house. What did this say go be in his house? Wealth and riches, prosperity and welfare shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever. So when I obey God, he says that wealth and riches shall be in my house. Amen. Say that with me. Say wealth and riches. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. It's okay. It's, it's okay to obey God. You should want to. Proverbs chapter 22, verse number four. We just go lay the foundation here, how God wants you rich. Look at that. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. This says in the Amplified, the reward of humility and the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. Amen. Say the Lord wants me prosperous. Come on, say it loud. Say, the Lord wants me prosperous. Lord wants me prosperous. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. See, I want you leaving here knowing that he wants you this way. See, God wants you that way because you are a snapshot of him. <laughs> yeah, you a snapshot of him. Look at verse uh, 19. Isaiah 1, if ye be what? 
Willing and obedient. You shall do what? Eat the how much? The, we eat the what? The good of the land. Amen. So it all goes back to what I said. Have faith in God and obey him and good prosperous things are coming your way. You're going to attract the prosperity. Amen. Amen. See, when you do things that way, you don't have to fall for gimmicks. You don't have to listen to people on the TV and all that stuff telling you that don't even know you in sin. Telling you to sow $1,000 today and a financial windfall is coming to you. Not when it says I got to be willing on obedient first. So how are you going to tell me that windfalls are coming to me if I'm in sin? So when I just do God's word, I would rather somebody tell me what's wrong with me and what's stopping the flow of finances and prosperity from coming to my life. That's right. But what has happened is we don't want nobody telling us what's wrong with us. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we rather do it the easy way. We treat God like Vegas. Let me bet. Let me place a bet in the offering basket. And just hope that I'm going to get the windfall. Let me follow these people around all over the United States. And let me just continue to do it this way and hope that I'm getting my windfall. Knowing that there's a lot of things in your life you got to correct first. See, I had this one prophet. He's from Africa. He came and he, he, he prophesied over my life. And it was... It was uh, the second or third time I had heard it. And, uh, but he pulled me close and he whispered to me. And he started telling me things that I got to correct. And that was a word I could receive. Because wow. only God could have told him what, what I needed to correct. Wow. And he was right on it. He was right on it. And so I said, I, I received that because said you need to take care of these things so that you can walk in this now. Go ahead, go ahead. Amen. He didn't tell me, oh, this is what's getting ready to happen to you and not tell me what God really want to tell me. Right, 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 right. That's why I'll tell you what God said first. Then you make the adjustment so that you can walk in what he said he's going to give you. Amen. <sighs> It says, but if you refuse and rebel, look at verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. See, Scott didn't say that. <laughs> he said, God said that. So you don't want to refuse and rebel against the word of God. See, people who rebel against the word of God, it, it, no, their, their lifestyle is indicative of it. No, I'll say that again. When you refuse to obey God, your lifestyle is indicative of it. You are, you are receiving the total opposite of what God says he, so you're supposed to get. Amen? Amen? So eating the good of the land only comes from your willingness and obedience to God's plan. Job 36 and 11. My wife's favorite scripture. All right, y'all got it? If you do what? I say, say that again. Obey and serve him. They say him. So he's making it known who you obey and serve. Him. You don't obey and serve me and don't obey and serve him. Right, 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 right. I, I can't promise you prosperity. That's right. Because that means I got to give you from what I have. You'd rather get it from God or somewhere that the, the way that God says you're going to get it. It says that if you, if you obey and serve, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their what? Years in pleasures. So it's okay that you have a nice convertible. Amen. All right? Let the weave just blow in the wind. <laughs> Make sure it's on there good, though. But, you know, let it, blow, let it just blow in the wind. And you just drive on down the road. It's okay. It's okay. Amen. Amen. 
Put your little personalized license plate on there. Job 36 and 11 on it. Let people know God did it for you. It's okay. He wants you to be able to do to have those things. But you're not doing it to show off. You're just enjoying what God gives you. How many of you got kids in here? Your kids do good. Don't you give them good stuff? They do something good. You're like, oh, here. You come home with stuff. They ain't even expect you got it. Here you go. They're like, what? oh, thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. Because they just, they just, they're good kids. They doing something good. That's how God does us. You go buy your kid a, a PlayStation 5, whatever they got right now. You don't tell him, don't let nobody know you got this. No, he get that thing. You know what he doing? He going to school. Man, you with my, I got a PlayStation 5 at the house. Now, don't be, y'all, don't y'all be telling your parents you want a PlayStation 5, 4, whatever it is. Amen. But what I'm saying is, the way we bless our kids, God does the same thing for us. He says that, he says that, he said, if, if the devil's people know how to give gifts to their kids, how much more your God will give to his kids? It's okay. Tell your neighbor, say, it's okay. God wants you to eat good. It's okay. God wants you to drive good. It's okay. God wants you to live good. It's okay. Tell your neighbor, say, it's okay. But he wants you to give him your best. If you want the best from him, give him yours. Amen. You can't be expected top from God and giving him low from you. Don't work that way. Whatever a man sowed, that shall he also reap. I give God my best, he give, I reap his best. If I don't give God nothing, how can I expect him to bless me up here? Amen. So we gave you power. Say power. power. Ability. Say ability. ability. So since he gave it to us, why don't we go get it? Deuteronomy 18 said that he swore to your ancestors that he will make you wealthy and prosperous. Matthew chapter 25. Look at this real quick. God, we asked us, so why don't I go get it? I tell you, that trip to Aruba really did me some good. Oh, no, 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 no. Y'all don't understand how much that trip did, what that trip did for me. And I'm not talking about just the relaxation part. It was a mind-altering uh, trip for me. Because what it did, it took me back to some different, some other points in my life when things were totally different. Okay, okay. Now, I'm not telling you that my life is not wonderful now. But it was wonderful, real wonderful. How many say I had some real wonderful points in my life that I, you know, I just got to look, I, I, you know, I got to get back there. That's where I was. When I, when I was just there, I, I was like, okay. And so God just said, I'm just reminding you of what you had, but you, you, you let it go for other things. No, not sin. Just your focus got off. Because anybody know me and my wife, we are givers. I, I don't have that problem. I'm not a stingy guy. Nor is my wife. We'll give you whatever we can give you. Amen? So my heart towards that, that whole money test as far as giving away or sharing the blessings that God has given me, passed that test, got straight A's in that. And I can say that. Uh, 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 with, with great confidence. I got straight A's in giving and helping people. I, I don't even worry about that. So that part I don't worry about. So, if, so when, I, when I get back there, it's just going to be in a greater measure. That's, right. That's how I look. See, I, I, I love blessing people. Right. Amen. Amen. 
See, when, okay. You love imitating God. If God is on the inside of you, you love imitating God. All right. See, it's not a, if, if God is on the inside of me, it's not a problem for me to imitate him. I want to do what he did. It's kind of like your, your, your the little boys that look at their daddy shaving and say, I'm, and they, they, they want to do that. See, that's it because God is on the inside, so there's no problem with me imitating him. So the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. So when I get blessed, I understand it's not mine. So if my daddy tells me, I want you to give away something or give something or bless somebody. Yes, daddy, because it's not mine. I want to please him. Right. And so a lot of us don't get the things that we want because we have not passed that test. Right. See, that ain't about the money test. It's a money test, but it goes greater than that because you're looking to, for whatever you have, you understand is not yours. So not only do you got to pass the money test, you got to pass the, covet the covetousness test. <laughs> Do you see what you have as yours, or is it the fullness thereof? God's. Because if I know it ain't none of mine, whatever he tell me to do, all right, Father, that's your stuff. I know I paid a note, but who gave me the money to pay the note? That's right. That's right. I know my name's on the deed, but who blessed me to have my name put on a deed? I know I went and prayed and asked God to help me get a car, but who allowed that to happen? So your car ain't yours, your house ain't yours, your money ain't yours, your kids ain't yours. Everything's his. See, God passed that test when he gave Jesus to the earth. That's my son. I'm not going to share him with anybody. My, my only one. But he passed that, so he showed you could pass that test. Then what happened? He sold the one and got back billions. Matthew 25. Let's start here at... Uh, uh, yeah. How, yeah, start at 14. In the kingdom of heaven, there's a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered him to them goods. And he gave one five talents, another two, another one, to every man according to his several abilities. Say ability. So here we see we talk about the ability. Everybody has one. Say, I got one. I got one. All right. And straightway took his journey that he had received, that he had received five talents, went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he had ten. Likewise, the other received two. He also gained two. He had four. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that received five talents came and brought by other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more. The Lord said unto him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make them rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He that also received two came and said, Lord, thou delivers me two talents. Behold, I've gained two others beside them. The Lord told him the same thing. Drop over to verse uh, 24. Then he said unto the one to receive one talent, said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathered where thou hast not straw. You know what he's telling him? You ain't did nothing. It's my money. You ain't, doing, you ain't doing nothing. It's mine. I can do whatever I want to do with it. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. And, and lo, there thou hast hit that, that, has, that, that has is thine. His Lord answered unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knowest if I, if I reap what I have, have, have sowed not, 
and gather where I have not straw. The all is therefore put my money to the exchanges, and then in my coming I have received my own usury. Take therefore with a talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. For unto every one that has, that, that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen? And so the ruler gave these men talents. Say talents. Yes. Now, we know back then that was in the form of money, but he gave them the ability to gain wealth. Two decided to take to five into two and, and do what they supposed to do with them and increase. The one decided to hide his talents. Now, these talents were basically gifted. Say gifted. The man just gave it to him. Here, take this and increase it. God has gifted everybody in here. But how many of us are burying our gifts? See, we talk about increase. What do you do well that you're sitting on? The gift God put on the inside of you. Can you sing? Can you do carpentry? Can you sew? Can you work on computers? Can you preach the gospel? What can you do well? And are you sitting on that gift? Because you can't be sitting there hollering about you ain't got nothing when you got a gift that you're sitting on. Yeah. That's right. If there's something that God placed on the inside of you that you could do well to bring increase into your home, then why are you sitting on that? Well, he called that one man something. He said wicked and slothful. Maybe you're just lazy. Say no offense. See, these things are there so that you can gain wealth. You cannot think that your job and the government is going to make you rich. So that's a lie. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's some people who climb the corporate ladder and they are rich. But that's for the choice few. Amen? But what they still did, they took a gift, and they climbed. They ain't standing down with their gift, celebrating the gift at the bottom of the hill. I could sing, but you're at the bottom of the hill. I could do carpentry, but you're at the bottom of the hill. I could do all these things, but you're at the, but you said that you ain't climbed yet. And so we have to use the gifts that God has given us to gain the wealth that we have in the earth. The apostles didn't stop working. Paul and them were still building tents. Peter and them were still fishing. That was their gift. That was what they did to bring increase to their homes. So what do you do well? What business or have you buried? Because I don't have the money to start it yet. Who cares? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. Amen. Amen. If I obey and serve him, I shall spend my days in prosperity, my years in pleasure. If I meditate on his word day and night, everything I do prospers. So what does your lack of money got to do with God? Right. <laughs> Starting your business. Mm. See, I started a business with no money. Amen? And God provided every bit of it. I'm talking about every bit. People were giving us money. We had to stop them. And it was because of the fact that we decided to trust God and operate in his word. See, we got out of the we want to get rich for ourselves mentality. See, you, if you want to be prosperous, 
God has to be involved. <laughs> if God is not in your business plan, rewrite the plan. Oh, he got to be in there somewhere. Now, I'm not telling you that you got to open up a restaurant and have a prayer booth in the back. But what I am telling you, you got to have a plan to increase the kingdom with the proceeds you make from the restaurant. That's right. That's right. Because that's the gift. He gave you the gift of cooking and preparing meals. You cook like nobody else. And he's given you that gift, but he didn't give you that gift so that you can get all the money and do nothing to help his kingdom come to pass. Because you got to look at it this way. You don't have a kingdom to build. And so me and my wife are trying to build the McCrary kingdom and had money and couldn't get a building because God wasn't in the plan. See, prosperity destroys the foolish. We were foolish. With, well, we were getting ready to be foolish with that. We were going to get everything we wanted. And I don't know how much God had to do with that. I'm talking about Bentleys, mansions, whatever we wanted, driving around. Because, see, back then I was in the flesh a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was in the, I, my cars, I was, my cars, all, they, I should have just had flesh on my license plate for my cars that I had. <laughs> or I-N-D-A flesh. In the flesh. <laughs> I bought, I bought a car, so I was so in the flesh when I bought that car. It was white, tan interior. I just wanted that car. That car looked good, man. I was like, yeah, got to have it. When traded in the same car, that was a different color to pay more money to get the color. Say in the flesh. I was, all, I was just all in it. Amen. Didn't tell her how much it cost. Just went and got it. Came home with it. Look, look what's in the driveway. It's like, why you buy that car? Uh, I, I just liked it. Not until that bill started coming in. Didn't like that car too much no more. Matter of fact, I sold that car. Amen. Because, see, when, you, when, when God ain't in your plan, you do things in the flesh to please your own self. And end up getting in trouble. Amen. Proverbs 10 and 4. Let's go there real quick. What gift you sitting on? Tell your neighbor, say, no more excuses. No more excuses. See, ooh, see, me and my wife, we, we, when we, we started talking about, when we was coming back from Aruba, we started talking about things we were good at. And me and my wife, we start businesses, and, we, and we're pretty good at them. And so we already head back into that. Amen. We we had we we heading back into that. I say by this time next year it'd be it'd be full steam ahead in that thing. Amen. And uh, I already know what it's going. We already know what we're doing. We know what we're selling. We know what we we're going to do. And uh, we sat down and talked about that. See that you can't you got see you got to first you got to really talk about it, get it in you. So while I was there, I, I was just you know looking at pictures and. Looking at things and start really getting it on the inside of me. Then we start talking about it. We got to finish talking about it. Um, we was in Nashville, coming back from Nashville this week, and we was talking about it again. And we continue to talk about it because you, if 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 the if the plan to prosper is, is not on the inside of you, then it's just a hope and a wish. Well, I would say hope is a wish. It's got to be on the inside. You just talking about it. This is what I want to do. This is what you know. This is what I I would like to do. And so you got to get, get down on the inside of you to where you start doing something with the information that you have. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 10, verse 4. He that he becometh poor that deal with the slack hand, but the hand of the diligent do what? Make it rich. Amen? Now, we'll get to that next verse at the, down at the bottom of my sermon. We're going to talk about that, too. But see, I can't be, say, tell your neighbor, say, you can't be lazy. Can't be lazy. Open that gift. Tell them to open that gift up. And share it with the world. That's what God gave it to you for. He didn't give you that gift so you could sit it in your house and talk about what you do. Amen. See, my mind goes, when I, when, see, your mind has to, oh. It just can't be stuck in one place. 
You got to look at how many streams of income can I bring in with this gift I have? Because, see, you want streams of income. Ain't nothing wrong with hustling. So he makes up, make fun of, you know, the Jamaican joke, you got five jobs. No, but see, if, you, if, if, them, if them five jobs are bringing in major streams of income and you're not overworking yourself to bring it in, oh, then glory to God, amen? Talk about me all you want. Call me what you want to call me. But I got streams coming in. See, a stream is a, like a you know, little river that comes from a larger body of water. See, so I want streams. Say streams. streams. Want them always coming in. But they won't come in when you got a slack hand. Your slack hand is a lazy hand. Say lazy hand. Lazy. Don't want to do nothing. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. What's that song that lady had? Talk about it, talk about it. Yeah, let's give them something to talk about. That's what we're doing. We're giving them something to talk about, but we ain't really giving them nothing to talk about. Amen? Proverbs 13. Verse number four. The soul of the sluggard <laughs> craves and gets nothing. See, that's what we're talking about. Say slugger. That's a lazy person. They want things, but they can't get nothing because they haven't put no work into it. You want it, but ain't no work there. It said the soul of the slugger desires and craves and gets nothing, but the appetite of the diligent is abundantly supplied. See, when you're diligent about your work, you're going to be abundantly supplied. We were in Nashville, man, and I went, and it was funny because how many of y'all know you don't go to Popeye's or Church's Chicken around 10 o'clock in the evening? Now, we wanted, we wanted some chicken bad. Some fried chicken, we wanted it bad. Hotel here, church is right there, and we laughing. I bet, and I was making a joke, I bet they ain't got no chicken in here. So we drove up. Man in front of us, he go for we drive up. What you want? I was like, whoa, okay. I, was, I said, I said, I, uh, yeah, I would like to have some chicken. And we was getting us a couple of, was it White Castle hamburgers? And we wanted a three-piece chicken thing. No, four, five-piece. I was going to get some chicken legs, and she was going to get her little pieces, and we were going to go back to our hotel room and eat. Well, we ain't got no chicken right now. It's going to be about 15 minutes. Yeah. All right, I'm already here. I'll wait 15 minutes. So we wait in line, pull up to the window. Uh, it's going to be longer than 15 minutes. We ain't got no chicken because the chicken man didn't come and drop the chicken in the grease. The chicken man been on break, and he ain't came back yet. I'm like, the chicken man? Who like, was the chicken man? The chicken man. So that's somebody that is special in that restaurant. <laughs> he is the chicken man. He only drops chicken in the grease. <laughs> I'm like, I just said, Lord, help her. I help her, Lord. And so I said, okay, I said, all right, look, just give me uh, three cheeseburgers, two of them without no onions. Well, we just go scrape them off. I said, you know what? I said, look, just leave, just leave onions on there. Give me three cheeseburgers, and we'll get out of here. <laughs> but see, let, let me explain something to y'all. Yeah, we got, yeah, yeah, and we got a, a little side of mashed potatoes, nothing to eat them with, so my wife got to use the top of the mashed potato thing to eat the mashed potatoes. Because we had to get creative now. So I say to myself, I said, you know something? 
that person there will never go no further than looking in that window. Yeah, she, yeah, she called and told on everybody. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> she should have been the chicken man. Now, everybody in the restaurant is the chicken man. If I work there and I want to pull out every bit of income I can out of there, then I need to know everything that goes on in there. So if the chicken man is on break and don't never come back to drop the chicken in the grease, I get off the line and I go drop chicken in the grease. How hard is it to drop some chicken in the grease? But they will never go any further because that's laziness. So they turned away cars. Now I'm talking about lines. No, 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 no y'all understand this. We coming from a church conference. So you know we all want chicken at the we go after we get through finish coming out of church. There's lines of cars in front of us and back of us, and they've got no chicken to sell. Sign on the thing says church is chicken. But the gift is not being given. So, how much money are you missing on? I ain't, I ain't, chicken man ain't here. No, you know what that, I'm talking about excuse, say excuses. Excuses got to go out of window. You, you looking, you're looking to be prosperous. Prosperous people don't have excuses. They have answers. They've got solutions. See, if she would say, look, it's going to be a little bit longer, but I tell you what, I'll throw in da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I would have stayed in that line because I wanted some chicken. Now I got to go back and eat some burgers. Y'all had the White Castle burger? Had to brush my teeth afterwards because all them onions and stuff on them things. Because she would just go scrape them off. That means you too lazy to make me a fresh little burger. A little burger. I ain't talking about no big one. I'm talking a little bitty burger. You microwaving it. It takes you all the five minutes to make me a little White Castle burger with no onions, but you said we just go scrape the onions off. Yeah, you, yeah, and t- tell me that. Now, for you to have people that got businesses, you better watch who you got working in your business. Because those people will have your business closed down because of their laziness. See me? I fire everybody. Me, Terry, Matthew, we working everything in there because everybody else is gone. Y'all out of here. You're messing up my streams of income. But you have to make sure that you don't have no excuses as to why you can't do what you do with your gift. Because see, many people got a blessing sitting right there in front of them, but your lack has blinded you from seeing it. That woman, okay, y'all remember the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, write this down. When with the, uh, the, the, the woman who had the issue. Now, check this out, and we're going to get into something here too, because we're going to go into the, the, the end of, our, of what I'm talking about. The woman had a problem. Her husband had died. And creditors were come to take her children and make them work off his debt. That's what they did a long time ago. And in some countries, they still do it right now. So, when, so, if, so if the parents die and they can't pay the debt, they come and take the kids and let the kids work off the debt however they see fit. Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? Now, but what got me here is when you read it, it says that this guy was one of the sons of the prophets. So he was a man of God who did not operate in God's plan for prosperity, and when he died, his family suffered. Mm. Me and my wife have seen countless times where a pastor dies and the family's begging other people for money to bury him. But they preached the gospel for 20 and 30 years. Why is there nothing there? 
Why do you got to ask anybody for some money to bury somebody? So how many men in here got families? Raise your hand. Do you have health insurance? Keep your hand up. All right. Now, do you have bare minimum or do you have maximum your company give you? See, this is the thing. I don't care that they're going to take more out of my check. Because I understand that the wealth of my family is generational even after I die. Yes. Right. See, I want mama to be looking at my casket after she's done crying and be like, baby, I love you so much. <laughs> Kids clapping, everybody happy. <laughs> even though they sad, daddy going in the ground, they know ain't hey, going go to wall, ground, wherever I'm going. But they happy knowing the fact that they set for the rest of their life. That's right. That's what you think. See, so see, let me tell you something. You, you let me be, nah, nah, I ain't nobody's wife, but you let me be somebody's wife, and you got $3,000 life insurance policy. They gonna burn, like, burn him. Go on, burn him up. <laughs> That's the truth. Hey, what you, gonna, what, you gonna, what you gonna get that money up for when you got bills to pay? Right. Burn him up. He didn't care. See, y'all look looking at me. Don't, don't look at me crazy, y'all. <laughs> Women, y'all ought to be clapping right about now. <laughs> Especially you ones that want to be married. You better make sure that Chico got a good insurance policy. <laughs> because it's wealth. $50 a month. That ain't going to hurt you. You got to be to see a poor person like, I can't afford no extra life insurance to pay only $50. See, you ain't wealthy. Because you're looking at, see, you can't live for the day not knowing you will die any day. You got to plan. And see, that wealth is not meant for just you. It's generational. Say it's generational. Do this. This is what I'm doing. This year. Matt's getting a, some bond, a bond or something for Christmas. Bobby going to sit there and be buying all them toys and expensive clothes. And ain't set none of our kids up financially to where they can get something later on. Amen? Because you got you to think past today. Amen? So this guy had no money. But when the man of God came and showed her, she had wealth in front of her. She just couldn't see it because of the lack in her mind. So he said, what do you have in your house? Turn and tell your neighbor, say, what you got in your house? <laughs> so I was asking, what gifts do you have? <laughs> so he showed her what was in her house. She said, I ain't got nothing but some oil and a cruise, some vegetables. Some vessels. He said, look, I want you to go and ask your neighbors for vessels. Take the oil that you have, pour it till it ain't none left. And then you take what you have, sell it, and you and your kids live. It didn't say survive. It said live on the rest. Meaning that after she did what the man of God told her, they had enough to live for a long time on what she had left. Because the wealth was right there in front of her, but because her mind was still impoverished about the situation that she was left in, she never saw it sitting there. One year, me and my wife, we made these, uh, what's them little Tootsie Roll? We went to, this, we went to the dollar store and got a bunch of um, Sunday cups. Pepsi, uh, Pep, was it Pepsi? Coca-Cola Sunday cups for $1. Filled them up. We, need, we were raising money for our kids. Filled them up with um, Tootsie Rolls and candy. She cut these little foam things off the top, hot glued them on there, stuck a straw in there, filled the tops of them up with uh, other candy, and we were selling them things. I think we're like, what? Depending on how big they were, 5 to $20. Raised so much money. It's because we didn't sit back and say we ain't got enough people in our church to, 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 to help the kids. We got a gift. It's about creativity. So my wife's very creative. She can do a whole lot of stuff. 
And so she had to get creative. And so that was one of the ways that we did it, just to help raise money for our kids to go. I forgot what they were doing. I think they went to, uh, they went out of town to Virginia that time where one of our people had took them all down. But we sold a whole lot of them things. What creativity do you have? Christmas time is coming up. Who's crafty in here? You go on your job, people get sentimental around Christmas time. They buy all kind of stuff they don't want. <laughs> you got to craft your craft. Make some things. Take them and make some money, some streams of income for your family and for the work of the Lord. Amen? Say wealth is generational. So God's plan for prosperity is simple. We always do. We say we got to obey and serve, but this is the plan. Number one, I got to sow. Say, I got to sow. Number two, I got to reap. Say, I got to reap. And number three, I got to save. Say, I got to save. Galatians chapter 6, real quick. We're going to go through these pretty quick, so y'all keep up. Galatians chapter 6. I got to sow. Amen. Galatians 6, verse number uh, 7. It says, be not deceived. Oh, y'all got it? Galatians 6, verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mad for whatsoever man mocks or whatever man soweth, that shall he do what? Also reap. Amen. Now, we know we're talking about some behavior things, but that's a principle that that's what God works at. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Amen. Sowing produces reaping. Say that with me. Say sowing, sowing. produces reaping. You cannot reap without sowing first. So if you got a job, and you want promotion on your job, you better sow into what you're doing right now. Go back to school and learn some more. Amen. When somebody, when your boss comes out and say, I need a volunteer to take on an additional project, stop listening to the people that are saying that you are kiss up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Take the project and work it for free. Let me tell you something. I worked it for free. I went and drove all the way up through upstate Michigan, dropping off stuff at Kmart's and Walmart's for free. Because what did it do? I sold and it reaped me a promotion. That's right. I didn't look at how much y'all going to pay me to get up there. Because see, sometimes you got to do something free to receive it. That's right. That's right. Amen. So if you go so if you want more, you got to do more. Say that way. Say if I want more. I got to do more. You got to sow in your work. You get what you put in it. Whatever you're getting out is determined by what you put in there. You can't put a little in there and expect a whole lot to come out of that. Amen? If you, if you want a promotion on your job, do the best job you can. Outperform everybody else. Stop worrying about what everybody says. Matter of fact, that's your company. And when you look at things as yours, then you will do better, Hopefully. Because you can't take your lifestyle at home and take it to somebody else's place. Yeah. Amen. Number two, I got to reap. Say, I got to reap. Second Corinthians chapter nine. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter nine. Verse 10. It says, now that he, oh, y'all got it? See, I got it. All right. Now he minister seed to the sower. Both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Amen. And so once I become a sower, the reaping process then occurs. Amen. I, and then what this says, it's going to allow me to keep sowing because it said that God is going to multiply my seed. Amen. So not only do I get back what I sowed, the Bible says that he's going to now multiply my seed. How many want your seed multiplied? Amen. What y'all gave today, you want it multiplied. Amen. But you've got to sow something to reap. You cannot, I'll say this again, you cannot reap if you have not sown. Amen. Because what will happen is when you expect to reap what you have not sown, you will go through illicit means to get it. You end up stealing. Amen? See, some of us want to receive from the Lord, but we steal from him. We want the top, but we constantly steal it. Amen? Number three, got to save. Say, I got to save. Gotta save. Look over here at Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 11. Remember that story of Joseph? Uh, when he had a uh, 
when, when he had interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And uh, uh, he told Pharaoh, he said, There's, you're going to make somebody over the, uh, head over the land, but what's going to happen is there's going to be a famine that's coming. And there's a whole bunch of food that we're going to store up. And we're going to store this food up for seven years. And when the famine comes, we're going to have enough food for all of Egypt to eat off of during the famine. Tell your neighbor, say, you got to save. save. Look at verse number, uh, what's that, Proverbs 13? Verse number 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor Shall what? Shall increase. So when, I, when I'm gathering my stuff, I got, I, got, I got to sow first, then I got to reap, then I got to save. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Got to have something in store. Verse number 6. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise with having no guide, overseer, or ruler. Provided her meat in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. When you look at them ants, them ants, they, all they're doing is working. And, and, and nobody's telling them what to do. They understand that there's a season coming where there's going to be lack. So they go and they gather up everything that they need to get them through the season. We were coming to church this morning and we saw this little squirrel with nuts in his mouth running across the street. What was the squirrel doing? The squirrel was gathering up because the cold weather is coming in and there's not going to be anything on the tree. So they're going out and gathering. They're not who we are. But they operate in the principles of God, and they ain't starving to death. They're not knocking on our doors asking for peanuts. They got enough off in that tree they living in to, to, to get them through the lack times. Malachi said, bring the tithes in my house so there may be meat in my storehouse. Everybody in here needs a storehouse. So when you're going through lack times, you can just tap into the storehouse and get what you need. Amen? See, how many want to be in this? I, I, I give God what's his, then I pay myself second, then I pay my bills. See, what's happening to some of us now, I give God what's his, pay my bills, and hope there's something left for me. No, that's out of order. You're supposed to be able to give God what's his, Pay yourself and then pay your bills. See, that's an overflow there. When my bill, when my bills are third down the line. Some of us, they first. Some of them second. I don't want my bills in front of me. That's adding sorrow to it. Check the check. I got to pay these bills. Oh, I just got to do enough to make ends meet. Well, that's not, that's not the kind of conversation we need to be having. I need to be able to pay all my bills after I've already paid, or gave God what's his, and I've done what I want to do for myself. And there's still enough back there to, do, to pay my bills. Now, there's going to take some discipline in that. Because, see, some of us keeping up with the Joneses, not knowing the Joneses is broke. They broke living that lifestyle. And you like, they got a new car, I'm getting me one. They got a new house, I'm getting me one. She got some red bottoms, I'm getting me some. She wears St. John, I'm getting me some. They got a Scotter, I'm getting me some. Some of these people broke, struggling, credit cards maxed out, living that lifestyle. Tell your neighbor, say, don't chase the Joneses. They probably broke. You don't want to do that. If top of the line is hurting your bottom line, then adjust your line. <laughs> if top of the line stuff is hurting your bottom line, then you better adjust your line. Come bring it down some. You, you can't do uh, uh, Brioni suits yet. See, Tony know what that is, see. The Brioni suits, they, them, them, them jokers nice. They put them on you, and it feel like somebody just grabbed you. 
Oh, I went, I, I, I went to Neiman, they, they sell them in Neiman Marcus. I went in there, and I just, I just was in there looking around. I said, man, I want to hit the guy. The guy was like, come on over. He, he probably knew I had no money about that stuff. But anyway, he said, come on over here. And I was like, yeah, he said, you know about, I said, I know about all these suits. He said, it was, it was it's Katone, K-I-T-O-N. And he took a suit jacket off. He said, let's try this on. And I put my arms in it. It felt like my arms was going in cotton. It was so soft. And he put it on me, and it was just like, boom. And he buttoned it up. He said, see, you ain't got to get nothing done to this thing. And I'm like, I sure don't. And, 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 I, and then he took it off, and I looked at the price of it. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Loose, loose hair, Satan, get off me. No. That's for grand for a suit jacket. But see, I understand that I can't do stuff and get top of the line and it's going to hurt my bottom line. Now, can I tell it? Can I tell it? What we did this weekend. What we did, what we did this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, cool. She said I could tell it. I, I don't even know how to tell it anyway, but anyway. See, sometimes your top of the line is not at top of the line stores. And uh, we, 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 we went out on an excursion this weekend just riding around at different stores, consignment stores, stuff like that, grabbing things. And I'm looking, brand new, got a brand new uh, uh, Hugo Boss suit jacket. Guess how much I paid for this? Three dollars. Found two. Now I bought these two shirts about a year or so ago from a store that's no longer in business. And the, the shirts I got on sale then, but the shirts were like 120 bucks. Found two of them for 4.99 each with the tag still on them. See. You got to be smart in what you're doing. Because, see, ain't nobody going to come and say, oh, you got that from a thrift store. <laughs> yeah. They don't know. She got, she got a, she got a bathrobe, got mink on it, cashmere with all this other stuff. She wears a coat. It look like a coat. That black one. She got that from the thrift store. Well, how much you got that thing for? 250 bucks. That thing probably cost about, yeah, $2,500. See, when you, when, how many of you that read that, read that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? See, People who looking to keep their wealth, they don't go out and be buying all that new stuff. It's like this. Why would I go out? I mean, if, if I went out and bought a, a Mercedes Benz S55, I don't need to get a 2014. I go get the 2010 that looks just like a 2014. Just like that. Ain't nobody going to be, a, I ain't got no big 2010 sign on the side of my car. This is a 2010. But see, when you're looking at that, you understand that, look, I don't have to walk around with a Neiman Marcus bag to look, feel good. See all these people over there in Lenox Mall walking around with Neiman's bags and all. I really, want, I really wish I could get inside their head and find out how they're thinking really when they're walking around with them Neiman Marcus bags. Probably got a pair of socks in it. Put it in one of these big bags. Well, like I got a whole lot of stuff. But my, my thing is this. 
you have to be smart with your money. Because you can't eat a $4,000 suit jacket. You can't, I, I'm on eBay all the time looking for stuff. It's mine. I could buy a used car. Somebody lived in the house you bought. <laughs> it's used. <laughs> I ain't moving here. Somebody living in here. No. <laughs> you bought it. You moved it to a used the apartment you stay in. Somebody lived in there. You didn't care. I wonder what they're going to think about me. Somebody lived in here before. No. You don't care. You doing what you can because you understand. You got to have something in your storehouse for time when times get lack, when times get hard. You got to have something left over. It's just wisdom. And so if, that, if you're not doing that today, don't beat yourself up, but start. Just start. Put something away so that you got something left so when something bad happens, You've got something there. But if you're looking at yourself right now and you can't make ends meet, then you got to look at where you are. Cable's got to come off. What are you worried about looking at cable TV for and you can't put gas in your car? Don't call me watching TV <laughs> saying I need gas in my car. Wow. Cut that dog on TV off. <laughs> Cut the cable off. Cut it off. It ain't important. Netflix is really good. Until you get on your feet and you operate in the overflow, it don't matter no more. But you got all this stuff going on and you're looking at your money being eaten, devoured. Tearing up your stuff. You living out the word of God. You doing things, but it's still, it's that area of management that you, not, you don't have under control yet. So we said the prosperity is more than how much money you have. It's about how you manage what you have. I know I'm going along, but y'all getting something out of this today, amen? Because I want y'all, I want y'all leaving here with a plan to say, you know what? No more of this paycheck to paycheck stuff for me no more. No more excuses about why I don't have this business started. No more excuses about why I'm not using my gift to bring income in for myself and for the kingdom. No more excuses. I got to get it done. Books got to be wrote. Amen. Music published. All of that. Amen. No more excuses. You want streams. Say streams. Yes. You want them coming in. To where you're not working for money, but your money's working for you. You don't even go to work no more. You sit in the house. Asking everybody, how's everything going? How, ask them, how they, how's everything going? Oh, I'll be in the office next week. I'm headed down to, to Tahiti somewhere for, for a month. Y'all run this shop. As a matter of fact, I got my satellite radio to check up on everything while I'm down here on the beach. Money's, money's working. No, money, money's working for you. Because you got those streams of income coming in. Your business started. Your tax business is coming. Nice big tax business. You thinking about working it. You gonna have people working for you. Amen. Amen. Because see, he's going back. I'm talking to Tony because Tony's going back getting his degrees and all the things that he his wife has too. They share with me some of the things that they need to do. She has something. Like, Can I share? You wear it. I saw it on Facebook. She said, my, my, my vision board gonna be what? Video now? A video now. Oh, how she gonna get it done? How many? How many gonna drop what you said you gonna do? Be be honest. You ain't put it in. You ain't put the work in like you supposed to. Come on, let's stand on our feet.
Yeah. Hallelujah. I got a question for y'all. Can you see it? No. No, I ain't, I ain't asking. I'm, I'm saying, can you see it? Can you see it? I'm not talking about it in principle. I'm talking about can you see it? What your it is. Can you see yourself doing it now? Can you see the life that you want? No, can you really see it? Can you see the life of the, that you want for your kids? Can you really see it? I'm talking about not in principle, but can you see it? You walking in it right now. You living it out right now. Everything that you plan is already happening right now. Can you see it? So that's the problem. You got to really see it. And I'm asking y'all, can y'all see it? And y'all telling me, yeah, you can see it. But I don't see you seeing it. So can you see it? Y'all don't get me, do you? Mm. No, see, 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 when you, when, you, when you see it, you can see it. And there's something that happens on the outside when you can see it. <laughs> so I ask you again, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Hallelujah. See, the man of God had to get the woman to see what was there while she was distressed and depressed and ready to give up. But he got her to change what she saw. Some of you right now, are not living the life that you want to live because you don't see what you need to see. When you see it, you go after it. When you see it, you make a change. Okay. When you got saved, did you see it? Somebody promised you something that your life was going to change. And you trusted the fact that I'm going to make a confession and trust in the God that I cannot see physically, but I believed in my heart that he rose from the dead and I made a change. I went after it. Same way. We all in here, everybody in here born again. Raise your hand. You born again. That's everybody in here. So what I'm telling you is, not, I, well, we're going to deal with the folks that's watching this by video, but I want us to leave this place today. Sure that I see it. Because when you see it, see, that's what I'm talking about. See, when you see it, you go after it. The Bible says seek. You will what? Fine. Not. And do what? Oh, can you see it? Can you really see it? No, because see, when you see it, there's, there's something coming out of your mouth that said, God, you said that you have a plan to prosper me, and I see your plan, God. I see it. I see it clear as day. I know things that may not be going the way they should, and my life is contradicted what the Word of God says, but I don't see that no more. I only see what I see. What, what did you say to me? You said that if I obey and serve, I've been obeying God, but I don't see it, but now I see it. See, when I was in Aruba, I, I saw it. I saw the store. I saw the things inside the store. I saw the people coming in and out of the store. See, I saw it. So now when I see it, I got to go after it because it's mine. It's mine now. 
I got to go after it. Do you see your marriage change? Do you really see it? It may not be what you want to be, but you got to see it change. Miss Alfred, you got to go after it. Whatever it is that's missing, you got to go after it. Because you're seeing it. I believe it belongs to me. You know, Pastor, I had on, uh, on last Monday in the minister's training class, I had some of the students to come up to see something from yeah. a different perspective. I think it changed them a little bit. What you think, Carlton? A whole lot. How many of you all have ever des desired to be in ministry? Operation and ministry. That's not in my class. Ebony, is that your name? Come here, Ebony. I want you to see something. She sees something from a different perspective, but I'm going to show her something that she hadn't seen yet. Come on up here. This is Ebony. This is my Facebook friend. Come on. I want you to see something. Ebony, y'all don't know about Ebony, but Ebony does praise and worship. But Ebony's been on a vacation. I wanted you to see something. You're used to seeing praise and worship from a different vantage point in a different place. Can you imagine doing praise and worship in a different place? Can you imagine that? Now, this is unfamiliar, but can you imagine doing praise and worship in a big arena? Leading thousands Amen. upon Amen. thousands. Amen. Can you see it? Can you think about all of you all who said, I want a business and you haven't written it down? Just go to a store, empty storefront on a main street. And just stand in front of it as though you're watching people come by and pretend that they're going to just find a place to park to come into your place. Amen. Amen. You want a home? Maybe you can't get into Sugarloaf because there's a gate, but you can go down North Berkeley Lake and South Berkeley Lake where there ain't no gate. It's called Millionaire's Row. Right. And just look, go real slow. Act like you're supposed to be there. You got to go visit it on the canvas of your imagination. And when you see it, you'll see it. She and I talked about some private things. She starts seeing and believing God and things started to happen. So now she see what she saw before she could see what she saw because it wasn't there to be seen. But now it was there because now she's seeing it. happen in your life when you can see it. Pastor, I almost called you bishop. Pastor, you preach today. Oh, you. Yes. Obey the prophets. <clears throat> you shall be established. Stop making excuses. Go and visit it. Don't let it just be on the canvas of your imagination. See it from a different perspective. You can go back to your see baby. When I was little, you know what I used to do? I had my godmother. I don't think I ever told you. Hortense. Mm -hmm. She would sing, and she would sing all over the nation. And I would sneak. I would wait till they left off the stage, and I would have something. Usually it was a Barbie doll in my mama's purse, and I would go grab it, and I would stand behind the podium. Nobody was in there, and I would just be acting like I'm singing because I could see it. Before I see it. And one time we, when we were at our pastor's church, and we go close, we were at our pastor's church, and he had just built a superstructure. And let's say about 5,000 people. Service was over, and me and Terry walked up on stage, and we just stood there and just looked from a different vantage point. And not that we want it because we want some, some vanity. I want to touch thousands of people. That's, my, that's the, the desire. I want to touch thousands of people's lives. And so I had to stand back and I had to look from a different vantage point and I just saw myself there. Now, even though I'm not there yet, I'm there here. And when I'm there here, it doesn't matter where I'm there out here because I'm not focused on where I am out here. I'm focused on where I am going to be in here. So you haven't done those things that you said you wanted to do. Keep it here and focus on it here and put the work 
on what you see in here, not with what you see out here. What do you like doing the most? Are you doing that? Some people go through corporate America their entire life unhappy because they know I should be doing something different. I've seen people, executives quit and go sell. My, my, my executive quit and he went, he went and sold books. He's so happy. We saw a pastor quit. Went on missions. That's what he does now. Yeah, a friend of ours was in corporate America. She stopped went and opened up a macaroni and cheese food truck. Doing what they love. Doing what they were called and created to do. I'm not telling you, I'm going to quit your job. What I'm telling you, find out what you were created to do and get in there and do it to the best of your ability and with all of your heart. And watch God bless it. The bottom line is that he's going to bless it. And it's going to touch many people. Many people. You musicians got such a great gift. You could teach people how to play. Make money. Make income. What do you love doing? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for what you've done in here today, God. You may be watching us by, by video today. We've made our call to the election sure here today that we're all born again. But I want to make sure that you're born again. If you're watching me by video and you said, I have not received Jesus Christ as Lord, I'm going to give you a chance to do that today. It's the best decision that you can ever make. You're looking at somebody who lived this life just totally the wrong way for many, many years. And it was one day that somebody like myself came and talked to me about Christ. Caused me to change my life. I accepted him as Lord. And I'm not going to tell you that everything just changed at the moment. It was all good, but it was the assurance that he's with me now and that I, when I do things his way, I'll get through. And the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the uncompromisingly righteous, but God delivers you out of them all. So that's the place that you can be in, the all-delivering power of God. You've tried to change and you can't. You've tried to make the adjustment, but you can't. You have short-term successes and you